Hi, I'm Lois Vogel Sharp. Today is April 24th, 2019. And I'm here with a serious message. Um, but before I even say it, I, want, I just want to I want to lift it all in prayer before the Father. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for the words that you give us and the understanding. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you're in heaven and your kingdom's going to come on the earth, Father, that that it is in heaven and it's going to come down here and you're going to dwell with man once again and all things are going to go back to the way it was in the beginning father when man walked in the cool of the evening with you and we thank you father that we're heading back to Eden we thank you father that the time frame of the one two four that you showed clearly when I was having my son and I had this out-of-body experience and you brought me into the room of time and showed me that the number 124 had something to do with time frames of things in life and that it, it, it does mean Eden and that everything and every step that we're going through in this world right now, Father, are leading us back to being with you again. That whole time period from the beginning of the earth all the way to the end, Father, when the new heaven and the new earth come, has all been to lead us back to a place where we can be one with you and walk with you like we did in the beginning. So Father, we thank you for these words that you give us through your spirit to guide us and direct our paths each and every day. I want to just explain how I got this, okay? The message that I put out the other day that night, I was sitting and I was watching television, and I had this tugging at my, in my spirit that God wanted to say something again. And I thought, well, I, wow, I just put out a message. What would he have to say something else about? So I kind of just, I, I listened for a second, then I got busy with watching the show. And I got up and I went into the bedroom, and I was getting ready to go to bed. And I get this tugging again. Oh, Father, you have something to say? Now? You have something to say? So I went about getting ready for bed. And I always like to wait on things because you never know. Sometimes it can be your own emotions. And you really have to be very cautious in just jumping in and listening to anything. So just as I'm ready to get into bed, I get this tugging again. And I'm like, now I know. God is talking to me, and then I, I, and I get these words. It's going to be a rough time for many. So I said to Gary, I said, Gary, I, I'm getting a word from the Lord. So he actually was sitting in bed already. So I got up, and I, I got the pen and the paper here, and I started to write this at 1018 p.m. That was exactly when I wrote down the time, and then I started to write. And this is what I got. It's going to be a rough time for many. Many of my children are going to cry because they did not listen. But they will be all right when they let go of this world. When they realize that I am their everything, they will cling to me for dear life. They will open up their hearts and souls and let me in for the first time, and they will sup with me. I long to be with my creation, and my heart breaks from what the enemy has done to you. I will redeem you from all the sufferings you have endured, and you will have joy unspeakable. It's time for you to see who I am as your father and who my son is as your Lord, and how to worship and, act, and, and actually be with the Holy Spirit, and how he grabs you and creates praises to your king. Yeshua is the king of glory, and he is coming for his bride. Hold on, my children, for the road will get rough, but you will become like your husband, who has been waiting patiently to be with you for eternity. Time to look up and accept who you are, and wait patience for the King of Glory is coming, and who will be able to withstand his power and glory? And just as I wrote the word glory, I looked at the clock and it said 1024. There is no way that that is a coincidence. That's the 124 time frame, and God point blank showed it to me. There's no way it could have been written down as quickly as it was without my thinking of anything, and then 1024 is right there on the clock. This is from the Father. And he's 
been moving me um, for the past few days with this urgency that this is about to happen. This, this economic crash is about to happen. I got up this morning. I'm just waking up and I get this. A major upheaval will cause this economy to crash. I'm, 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 I'm half asleep, but I'm, I'm coming out of a sleep and I get it again. A major upheaval will cause this economy to crash. And I got up because I was still in bed. I was half asleep still. I got up and I said, I better write this down because I'm not going to remember the word upheaval. I'm not going to remember these words exactly how the father said it. And I went and I wrote it down so that I would not forget it. And that's this morning. I got that early this morning. And I wrote that down. So there's going to be some kind of an upheaval that's going to cause this economy to crash. God will not say when, but we are this close to it happening. He's been saying the word imminent for a time now. And imminent means like right there. Okay? This is about to take place. And whether you believe it or not, it's still going to happen. And we right now, as the Church of Jesus Christ, must be in serious prayer about all of this that's coming down the pike. There are things going to escalate. They are escalating already. Churches are being bombed, okay? The escalation is taking place right in front of our very eyes. But there is going to be this economic woe that happens to, the, to our country. And we're going to deal with it. And I'm not sure what the Lord is going to actually do to make it come to pass, but it has to happen because God is going to use it. He says he's going to wake up his people. And there are many of you out there that are just acting of the world and you're in the world still and you're looking to the world for your answers um, and you're not clinging to the Father. You're not looking to him for your answer. You're still looking to the world for your joy and your happiness. And oh, if this happens to me, I'll be happy. If I meet my future husband, I'll be happy. If my family would just come to the Lord, I'll be happy. And we're just looking to material things and to the, to the world for our answers. When in fact, the world is the opposite of where our joy comes from. Because it's fleeting. You can have one thing happen and then the next minute it's gone. You know, you can have a beautiful home and then it goes on fire and you, you have no house anymore. Things can be lost very quickly in this life. So unless we have a oneness with God, our Father, our Lord, and the Holy Spirit, we're going to be crying and upset when things go down. When afflictions come on us, we have to understand that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Bible says our God will deliver us out of them all. We have to be fighting the good fight of faith. You're not fighting. You're just accepting anything the devil is throwing at you. God is not going to take something away just because you cry and beg him. The word tells us plainly, we have been given the name of Jesus. We have been given the authority in this world. Just like Adam and Eve had the authority in the Garden of Eden. And when the devil came in, they could have told him, hey, get out of here. You don't belong here. And he would have left. He would have had to leave. But they didn't do it. We're not doing it either. We're not rebuking afflictions. We're not rebuking what the enemy is throwing at us. And we're just letting it happen because we don't understand our authority. I had somebody write to me in an email and said, well, the Bible tells us not to worry because the birds, you know, the birds are out there and God says that he takes care of them. So we don't really have to do anything. That's not what that scripture means. The scripture is telling us not to be fearful. Because our Father is, knows what we have need of. But it doesn't mean you don't go out and work and make a living so you can pay for your bills. It doesn't mean that if you don't get a warning that a hurricane's coming and they tell you you have to evacuate, it doesn't mean you stay in your house because God's going to take care of you. It's like, you ever hear that story where the people, they're on the roof of the house and, and there's a big flood there and they're waiting to get rescued? And a boat comes by and tells them, well, come on, get in the boat. No, no, God's going to take care of us when the boat leaves. And every way that they have to get out of there, they don't take, they don't take it because they keep saying, no, God's going to rescue us. And then they all drown. And they stand before God and they're like, what happened? He says, listen, I sent you a boat, I sent you this, I sent you that. And you just didn't take it. So in our ignorance sometimes to what God is trying to tell us to do or not do, we miss it. They missed the boat. Are we missing what God is telling us to do right now? What is he telling us to do right now? 
was supposed to be in serious prayer and fasting for salvation of souls and for our country to come back to God. It's slowly moving in that direction because we have a president that's giving us our Christian rights and he believes in Jesus. He's lining us up with Israel. We're, we're swaying away from the total opposite of the Word of God, and we're coming back slowly. But there are things that have to be changed before the blessings can come back. And this economic woe has to do with the fact that we are aborting babies every day, and we are still not following the Lord the way we should be. So God is still going to straighten us out and show us the way. The safe havens, they're biblical. Isaiah 26, 20 through 21, I say it all the time. We're going behind closed doors. We're going to go in these places and God is going to make them safe havens. Tribulation arcs, whatever you want to call them. We are building one right now. We miraculously got this land. And we're going to miraculously build it. Another person had a question about, well, I don't have any funds to send you. I have silver and I have gold. Well, what did they do with the Bible? When they built the temple, when they built places for the Lord in the Bible, what did God tell them to do? It was spoken by the prophets. It was spoken by those who have been given the authority. Bring the silver and the gold. And that's what the people did. They took from what they had. And it was actually the spoils, most of it, from when they left Egypt. They had gold and they had silver. And they brought it for the building of the temple. These are the things we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be giving for the cause of the safe havens. And, and sending it to the places where they're going to be building these places. We're one of them. We're located in New York. It doesn't matter where you live. But if you're in a place that is not safe, you're going to leave there and you're going to come to one of my pla our place. If we have another place, we will. But right now we have one place and we're focused on building that. We have a road that has to get put in. I just got the estimate of the road. It's about $40,000. And that's if we can get the own quarry uh, rubble that we need for the, for the foundation of the road on our own property. Otherwise, we'll have that added expense to it, too. We have to have the road so that we can get up there, back into the woods where we're going to be. So that's a $40,000 expense. That's just out there, to, and it has to get done. These are things that need to get done. So those who have been blessed with finances can help financially. Those of you that have put it into your gold and your silver, there's no reason why you can't be using that. It's, it's money. If it's sent where it can be used, where the ministry can use it and turn it into finances, when the time comes to do these things, amen. So don't say you don't have the means to help, because you do technically. And that's what the, the Father says in the Word. The gold and the silver are mine. He's going to use the gold and the silver. And somebody said to me, well, how come um, you're saying that these places should be built already? These places should have been built a long time ago. But nobody believes it. Very few believe that we're not getting out in a pre-trib rapture. They're not listening to Matthew 24 and what it says. There are those that believe the truth and there are those that think we're getting out of here before any tribulation happens. When it says in the Bible that we're spared the wrath of God, that means we're spared the judgment of God. We're saved, in other words. We're washed clean from judgment of God's wrath on the earth. His wrath's coming on the earth for their disobedience. We're free from that because we follow Jesus and we're washed in the blood of Jesus. Our sins are washed clean. If we follow Him and walk the walk, that doesn't give us the right to live any lifestyle we want. We're supposed to follow Jesus and repent. If we're having a sin in our lives, we need to take it to the Father so He can set us free from these things. But the building of these places is vital because it's going to be weather phenomena. We're going to have all kinds of weather phenomena out there that's going to be like unbelievable. And we're going to have to have these places built to weather the storms. That's what they're being built for. So, earthquake zones, you don't want to be in earthquake zones. You don't want to be in cities where reprobate lines are going to go nuts. And you won't be able to walk down the street and be safe anymore. They're looking to kill us. The devil's looking to stifle and destroy God's people. Because why? Why is he doing it? Because he wants to take over the planet Earth. 
He wants planet Earth. He wants it to be his. He's been trying to take it over for a long time now. He tried it in the days of Noah. And, it, and God made it fail because he caused the flood and destroyed all the giants. He's going to try it again with the AIs. He's going to take over the AIs because they have no souls. He's already taking over man who has a soul. Because man is surrendering his soul over to the devil. And following the ways of the devil. Which should have never been. These things should have never been. But it is what it is. We are susceptible because we have free will, and what will our free will allow us to do? Will we follow Jesus, our Lord, or will we follow the ways of the evil one? We have a choice every day, and what choices are we making? Are we helping build these places? You know, what is our priorities? What is your priority? You know, it says in the Bible, well, then you're more concerned about building your own house than the house of the Lord. It tells it in the Word. It says it. Because everybody wants their own house and everybody gets excited about fixing their house up and this and that and this and that. And look at half the churches out there. They look like they're dwindling and falling apart. Because the people aren't giving and tithing. They're not putting in to, the, to, to the, the, the house of the Lord so that God's house can be kept up. We get more concerned about our own lives and what we need to do to make ourselves happy. It's not about your happiness. It's not. It's about your relationship with the Father. And if you have to be unhappy in order for you to give your life over to Jesus, well, then that's what's going to happen. If America has to fall to her knees with an economic crash to make her realize it's not about being rich. It's not about gold and silver and riches. It's not about this prosperity gospel that's out there being able to get a Cadillac and being able to become a millionaire. That has nothing to do with the kingdom of God. It's about our richness in our spirit. It's about our richness in our walk with our Father, being one. Being one with Him. Just like He's one. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's, a, it's called a card. It's one. Three in one. When we accept the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we become one. And that's how you can receive messages from the Father. That's how things happen. You can hear His voice. You can feel Him. You know who He is because you're one with Him. You're one with Him. And when you become one with Him, that's how He uses you. But until you let go, He can't use you. Until you get out of your own ego and your own vanity and your own wanting your own PR out there, He can't use you because you're getting in His way. Self gets in His way. You have to be selfless. You have to die to self to gain your life, the Bible says. That's what it means. You have to let go of everything that's important to you and surrender it to the Father and trust Him. You have to trust Him with your very life. That's what it's all about, church. That's what we need to do. We have to trust Him with our very lives. So, Father, I'm praying for your people now that they would be filled with the Spirit, that they will hear the truth and understand the truth and understand who they are as your children so that they can walk with you and have fellowship with you and stop getting so focused on their own personal lives and the things that they're dealing with, but go beyond that, Father, and, and accept your love for them and your healing for them and your compassion for them and their purpose in their walk with you. So that they know why they're here and what their purpose is. And I rebuke Satan. I rebuke every demonic force that comes against God's people in the name of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. And I command you to let go of God's people in the name of Jesus. For you have no place in the Christian walk. And those of us that have had past things that we've done that have brought any demonic entities in... We repent of it, Father. We repent. Let your people repent, Father, from the lifestyles that they lived before they knew you that might have allowed these entities to come and be part of their walk. So we come against all of that, and we pray for deliverance in the name of Jesus, Yeshua, the King of Glory. That's why this ministry was named the King of Glory, because of Jesus. Go read Psalm 24, for the King of Glory is coming. And he will come back for his bride. 
So I'm Lois Vogel Sharp, and I will be back when he sends me back again, and have a blessed day. Don't turn the video off yet, because the Lord just spoke to me up here in the studio, right as we were getting this ready to put it out, and I have to put this in, because it's... God's been talking to me all day today. All kinds of supernatural things have been happening all day today. So I just want to read what he said. Lois, this is about to happen. This is the most exciting time to be alive for my people. Signs and wonders will follow them everywhere, and the world will know that I am God. Since the beginning of creation, I have been behind closed doors, and I will... For the first time since the fall in the Garden of Eden, come out and reveal myself to the world for all to see. I have been silently waiting for this moment and tugging at the hearts of my people. Now, as the seals open, the world will see my power and my glory manifest itself for all to see, and they will be left wanting. My people will be set free, and we will be together forever. Rejoice, for we are finally here for this final countdown to Eden. Love your father who will dwell with man once again. And go read Isaiah 26, verse 21, because it says there, The Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth. So what God is telling us there is, when man fell in the Garden of Eden, and this really touched my heart because I never really thought about this before until now, he no longer was able to walk with man. He had to leave because they fell into sin. And he could no longer be near us the way he was in the beginning in the Garden of Eden because we would die in his presence. Just like now, you can't see the Father face to face. You just can't see him and live. You can have visions and, and, you know, that kind of stuff, but you cannot be in the presence of the Father. We have Jesus, and he's the mediator between us and God, because we're washed in the blood, but he's not able to be with us anymore. Think how he must feel in heaven, not being able to be with his creation. And he just told me this. I was just sitting here, praying. He said, Lois, this is about to happen. And what is he talking about? He's talking about the crash. He's talking about everything changing forever. The new era in time is about to happen. And this is the most exciting time for the Christians to be alive. Even though there's going to be all kinds of crazy things going on, we are going to be walking in the power and the fire of the Holy Spirit like never before. The former and the latter rain. The latter rain will be greater than the former rain. And think of how the former rain was. Peter raised the dead. They raised the dead. Their shadows healed people. Amazing things happen, and it's going to be greater than that time. God is trying to show us who we are as his people, and we are now in that time frame. He's told me for the past three days, it just, I keep getting these prophetic things. They're like coming one after the next, after the next, after the next. Because he's telling me, Lois, this is it. This is it. We are here. We are here. If you're not paying attention, it is time to pay attention. Because we are about to get slammed with the crash of the century. And it's going to wake up many of you. And you're going to know, once this happens, that I am truly speaking from the Father. There is more that goes on that you don't even have a clue about that I deal with every day. With things that he tells me and they happen right then and there. It's like, this is just what it is. It's, it's the Holy Spirit. It's Father. It's Jesus moving his people. And he's moving his prophets to, to reveal these things that are going to come to pass so that we can have a heads up and be prepared for it. So do whatever you have to do to prepare. Get some extra food, extra water. Take some of the finances out of the bank and have it handy because the banks could even be shutting down. We don't know. I don't even know how severe it's going to be. All I know is it's going to bring America to her knees and it's going to wake up God's people. I don't know how much we're going to wake up and what else might have to happen, but I know there's going to be a period of time when we have a little bit of a lull so that these safe havens can get done. They're not done yet because nobody's been listening. That's why they're not finished yet. But once these things start to happen, many are going to get on board because I had, I had a dream about it 
few years ago, and it was after this happened, and the green screen that I saw, which I had the green screen I put up a while back, I, uh, my, my computer just turned into a green screen right in front of me, God showing me that this is about to happen. We are, we are that close. We are this close to this happening. So I'm Lois Vogel Sharp, and have a blessed night. And I will be back when he sends me back again.